We've got ourselves a new weapon pack to tuck into here, and when you successfully hit an enemy, dark shadow magic will explode and expand outwards from the weapon to then contract and deal area damage to anyone in the vicinity. Now, all of these weapons are a part of the new Sorcerer's Weapons Pack that has been found in the game files by Peta and Ibsar, meaning that we don't yet know when they are going to be released, but it will almost certainly be an incoming Helix Pack. But let's first kick this off with the sickle. It's called the Devil's Claw, and it's said that whoever wields this weapon will have their deepest desires revealed and a shadow cast over their fate which is very ominous indeed and that's certainly the direction that this weapon pack is taking as it looks like the dark purple shadow magic has imbued itself inside the sickle threading from the circular orb above the hill all the way through to the point of the blade. There's also some really interesting runes emblazoned onto the edges of the sickle and I've got a feeling you're either going to like this design aesthetic or you're not. As for perks though this is where you're going to be able to conjure some shadow magic blast. The energy expands outwards and then contracts dealing area damage after a successful special attack which is just holding down the parry button in combat by the way if you didn't know and then that's going to trigger up to a maximum of four stacks within 15 seconds. Additionally, the area of effect perk does stagger enemies in the vicinity, by the way, and the damage output is relatively low from what Peda and Nika have demonstrated here through their gameplay. And I think that's why it's not being included on the stat bonus page and subsequently being left purposefully ambiguous because it's just not very good. But that said, I do think with most Helix sets, you're usually grabbing them for the visuals or the animations and not to kind of 360 no scope one shot everything in game. And I think this weapon and the rest of this pack do tick those boxes. Now, next up here is the Sorcerer's One-Handed Sword, which is described as also being infused with dark magic, but with the purpose of slaying demons, dragons, and all form of supernatural monsters. And I was going to drop a terrible joke in here about how we don't actually have many of those creatures because, you know, it's an Assassin's Creed game. But now I come to think of it, we actually do. So touche, Ubisoft, touche. But when it does come to stats, you're of course going to be picking up that blinding flash of exploding dark magic. But comparatively to the sickle, you you'll trigger this after parrying an incoming attack with the cooldown remaining at 15 seconds. So essentially, every 15 seconds, you'll be able to parry and then tap into the Dark Realm. Visually though, it follows the same aesthetical trend of the sickle, but imposed onto a rather sharp looking necromancer styled weapon model. It's not for me personally, I do feel it's very basic if I'm being honest, but I can also see the allure if you're into this type of weapon style. And before we move on to the next two weapons, if you found this no-nonsense breakdown informative so far, please do leave a like on the video. It Really, really helps me out so thanks very much right on to the next one here it's this sacrificial dagger where the weapon itself is noted as drinking the blood of those who have been offered to its blade in fact it says regular feedings are required to help maintain its edge which is a little bit odd and that may well be the case but it looks like a very elaborate ceremonial cheese knife to me or something i loot in a random chest box throughout the game and then not equip ever again of course that's just my opinion and you may like the look of this and that's totally cool but the stats aren't much better either because the same energy expansion perk does apply here but it's only triggered on a heavy finisher with that 15 second cooldown and as someone who has a lot of playtime with seeks and daggers in Valhalla having a heavy finisher perk with this fast and fluid weapon type really isn't ideal in my opinion but equally this is an incoming helix pack so you don't want the best stats locked behind a paywall as we briefly mentioned before so that's good to bear in mind here as well. Now for our fourth weapon of this pack, we have the Ancestor's Scythe, which is a well-coveted weapon within the Sorceress community. Its ingenious dwarven design allows users to cast spells at long range and then dispatch those enemies who are closer to home. So you've got yourself a dwarven mage scythe here, and I don't actually think it looks too bad, to be fair, if that's what they're going for. Again, similar stats to its weapon pack counterparts, with the explosion perk occurring on a light finisher, which is certainly more favourable than a heavy, in my opinion, but that does come down as well to your own personal playstyle and combat preferences and depends whether you decide to pull the trigger on this set when it does arrive in the store. One thing I haven't mentioned though, and it does become really evident on the scythe weapon and that's purely because of its size comparatively to the others, and that's when the dark magic perk is ready to explode. You can actually see it charged up and illuminated on the weapon itself. It's kind of almost telling you, all right, it's time to drop a light finisher now. And when you do, it'll revert to the standard weapon model. So no purple glowing until that 15 second cooldown has expired. I do think that's a very small small nice detail there and out of all the weapons I think this scythe is the best out of the bunch for visuals and stats and perhaps on par 
with the sickle as well. What I would say though, if you do want to keep up to date with Assassin's Creed and you enjoy these first look videos, make sure you subscribe so you can find your way back to the channel here easily. We do have some more interesting stuff to talk about soon and these type of videos are only possible thanks to Pedder and Ibsarp who put in a lot of work for us behind the scenes so please do leave a like to show your support for them and a huge thanks to Nika who has also continued to help me over the last few days so I was able to get these videos out to you sharpish. Anyway, as usual, coffee's on me. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you soon.